Disney World Epcot Center in Florida. Welcome to Memorial Day coverage of the President's inaugural Bands Parade. Hello everyone, I'm Jed for this historic event. We sure are, Robin. The President's helicopter has just arrived, and let's join the Voices of Liberty right now for the beginning of today's event. I think you just saw the Presidential helicopter hovering over the Italian Pavilion here at World Showcase. Right, I think he's going to circle around the Italian Pavilion here at Epcot Center and move back to the, uh, in back of the American Adventure Pavilion, which is right next door, where the Voices of Liberty are singing right in front of the American Pavilion right now. What a moment. As you can see, the uh, President and Mrs. Reagan are moving into the presidential limousine right now for a short trek into the uh, American Adventure Pavilion here at Epcot Center. There they go, and this has been a moment several months in the making. Of course, this whole affair was frozen out back in January. And what you're looking at right now are the uh, some of the 18 high school bands that are participating in today's Memorial Day Parade from uh, throughout the nation. And these kids are excited, Robin. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. You sure can. There are enough goosebumps in that crowd to go around. These kids are emotionally charged. They've been ready for this event since way back before last January's inauguration. And of course, all of their dreams and hopes were frozen in that awful snowstorm during the inauguration day. That's right. The Voices of Liberty here. The Voices of Liberty. Those are terrific. Every time you hear it, it gives you the goosebumps, doesn't it? It really does. You can actually say that this is the inaugural parade that never was. Robin alluded to it just a few moments ago. It's not taking place, though, in Washington, D.C., obviously, but right here in central Florida at Epcot Center in Disney World. Epcot, incidentally, we may as well get this out of the way right mm -hmm. now, if you don't know, stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. And it was one of Walt Disney's fondest dreams, and it is a dream come true. But I'll bet Mr. Disney probably had no idea that an inauguration day parade would take place right here at Epcot Center. Robin, if you remember that last January in Washington, it was C-O-L-D cold, quite a bit different than it is today with all the, the bright sunshine and uh, uh, the warm weather that we're experiencing right now. It's a beautiful day, and we have little concern today that cold is gonna cancel this parade. I think the only thing we do have to worry about is perhaps that the children might get a little withered under the heat. And there you see some of the crowd in the bleachers. They've all gathered here for this historic moment to see a recreation of the inaugural day parade. Little <laughs> children, quite a moment for them. Certainly something they can go back to history class and talk about. You bet. What we're going to see today is a parade featuring almost 3,000 student musicians from across the country. Now, two of the troops are actually from President Reagan's old stomping grounds in Illinois. One of the bands is from the town in which President Reagan was born. 
And there you see the crowd. Boy, they're coming in here. They've been gathering all morning long. Folks just trying to squeeze up to get a, a peek of President Reagan as he comes in there. In addition to the bands, we're expecting a crowd around here today of somewhere around 60,000 people that are going to be lining the parade route on this Memorial Day. And they are excited about seeing the president. They certainly are. And a lot of these people are probably from the Orlando area. You know, Disney World has been advertising this event all weekend long to try and attract the local folks who wouldn't ordinarily get a chance to see something like this. And you can imagine the surprise of the people who already had plans to come to Disney World and they got a special treat in addition to uh, seeing the first family of Disney World, which is, of course, uh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> They're right. going to see the first family of this country. In fact, I spoke to some people today who had booked their reservations a year in advance advance. We spoke to a family from Fort Lauderdale who booked their reservation for this big Memorial Day weekend one year ago and did not know until yesterday that President Reagan was going to be here. Quite a bonus for those folks indeed. Well, there's no question about it. There is a lot of excitement planned here this afternoon. We're here in the World Showcase portion of Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. And in the center of the World Showcase is the, um, the Lagoon, the World Showcase Lagoon. And it's around this lagoon that all of the bands that we've been talking about will be marching. It's a 1.3 mile route around the lagoon and all 18 bands have already marched to their starting positions essentially. And right now, we're waiting for the arrival of the president on the outside. He's in the uh, American Adventure Pavilion right now and uh, he should be coming out any minute. I believe he's inside Judge shaking hands. Once he does get into the American Adventure Pavilion, he will be inside meeting with some of the top Disney World officials who, of course, made this event possible. And then he is going to come out and go into a motorcade. Once the president finally gets here to see the parade, he'll be watching it from a reviewing stand that is right across from the American Adventure. Now, that's the American Pavilion here in the World Showcase portion of Epcot Center. And it sits right in the middle of the nine other nations that are something like you've never seen before, I guarantee. Oh, the fireworks display. Uh, if you've had the opportunity to see the fireworks display at uh, the Magic Kingdom in your visits to uh, Disney, uh, Disney World here in Orlando, uh, you've seen some that amounts to roughly half of what we're That's going right. to see this afternoon. In, in it, fact, they're going to use more shells in this fireworks display than they've ever used before. And as you know, the explosions are going to come so quickly that it's going to be incredible. And what we're looking at right there is uh, part of the parade route and some of the beautiful landscaping, all of the flowers that uh, are so prolific throughout the entire parade route here at Epcot Center. It is absolutely beautiful, beautiful landscaping, beautiful day, and uh, a lot of people are very excited about this uh, Memorial Day parade and seeing the president, many oh. of them, for the, of course, for the first time. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Think about it, how many people really get the chance, and so many of them by accident, to just stumble across a presidential motorcade. I was talking to a lady in the crowd earlier who, of course, didn't know that the president was going to be here until a few days ago and said that she can't believe she's going to get the chance to wave at him, and then she she might have to get out of the car and try to kiss them. I think Secret <laughs> Service might prevent that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that may be a little bit much. Uh, Rob and I have not been to Disney World since uh, 1979. The last time I was just about where we are right now, it was nothing but woods and marshland. And Big as you can difference. look around here, you can see quite a few changes since then. Epcot Center, quite a project. I believe it cost a billion dollars. That's a billion with a B dollars to put this on. And I understand that it's the largest construction project, private construction project ever mounted in the United States. It's And we think they're going to be singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. This is a group, incidentally, that is on permanent staff at uh, the Disney facilities, and they, they sing all the time here at the uh, American Adventure Pavilion here at Epcot Center.
the presidential motorcade. As you can see on your screen, it is entering the World Showcase Promenade right now uh, for an introductory wave at all of the assembled bands. The president will completely circle the World Showcase Lagoon uh, 1.3 miles so that everyone who is here this afternoon will have a chance to see him as he waves to all the gathered crowd. And Judd, there the president goes, starting to pass the Japanese pavilion. Again, one of ten World Showcase pavilions here. The Japanese pavilion, I think you're about to see it in just a few minutes, is a five-story pagoda. It is a replica of an 18th century pagoda that is in Japan. Incidentally, an interesting point, President Reagan specifically wanted to have a motorcade that went around the parade route. He requested it of Disney officials because he wanted the chance to get a close-up look at all those kids who so desperately wanted to play for him. And I'm sure he wanted to uh, continue the tradition of having a first lady take part in the inaugural day festivities. There you see Japan, I promised you. <laughs> There's Japan. The first lady to take part was uh, Mrs. William Howard Taft back in 1913, and from then on, uh, women participated in the parade, which until then had been strictly a male event. Well, we've made progress, haven't we? Isn't that beautiful? Listen to those voices. Absolutely beautiful. Really, being here, it's so different. You really start to get the goosebumps every time you hear them sing one of those patriotic songs. As the uh, president continues to make his way down there, let's uh, give a brief explanation here. In addition to all the bands and people, as we were talking about a moment ago, assembled, what President Reagan will be passing by is the World Showcase. And as Robin said a moment ago, he's just passed by Japan. Uh, he will go on to pass by a whole series of other countries, kind of a recreation of ten nations with shops, shows, and restaurants throughout the motorcade uh, career. Right now, he uh, is near the front door of Morocco. Now, this is the newest nation to be added to the World Showcase. It opened just last October. And I walked through it yesterday, Robert, and you really feel like you're in Marrakesh going through there. Well, Chad, of course, that's the whole idea of the World Showcase experience. It gives the visitor a chance to practically travel around the world in the day or two or three days that they spend here at Disney World. And believe me, I've been to many of these countries, and this is really authentic. When you walk into Morocco, you feel you're there. When you walk into Japan, you're there. It's exciting. Well, right now, they're... Uh going past Morocco and they're heading toward France. That's what you see right ahead of the motorcade right there. This pavilion uh, houses some really extraordinary French landmarks, right? That's right. Disney, of course, is experts at weaving magic. And oh, there is really no question well done. about it. This is a, the Epcot Center opened uh, October 1st, 1982. And since that time, tens of millions of people have uh, come into the park. Last year, I think, in just, just 1984 alone, 22 million people came through the park to see what's, uh, what is here. And awesome. what is here is truly magnificent. I was astounded to go through some of these pavilions and to actually see uh, some of the rides and uh, to experience in the World Showcase here some of these nations. I've had the opportunity over the years to visit some of these nations and uh, what you see here is a true replica and, and a really fine is. example of the food as we were talking about Too with bad France. the president isn't going to have a chance to sample some of that. <laughs> oh, I'll bet he <laughs> Maybe there's a jelly bean or two around here. Now the president should rather swiftly be approaching Canada. He is in England though right now. And there you see the pavilion that represents the United Kingdom. And the uh, lagoon there in the foreground could be the River Thames. Really? <laughs> I think it's going to be quite a spectacle. And here comes the president again. I think he's going through Canada now. And oh, well, he's, he has just passed uh, the halfway point in his trek around the lagoon. And it is difficult to keep up with the president because there's so many people. They must be five or six deep. It's hard to tell what pavilion they are in front of. I understand the president is headed towards Mexico. Buenos dias, President Reagan. <laughs> and Mexico is represented by a pavilion. And you'll be about to see it right there, a pavilion that is a recreation of a Mayan pyramid, the kind of pyramids that you would see if you go down to the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. 
And there is a crowd, Judd. I know you can see it on your monitor. They've got to be 10, maybe 15 deep there. Oh, it is absolutely unbelievable. And would you believe it, in the Mexican pavilion, a river flows through that pavilion. There is an extraordinary restaurant there. I know we keep talking about restaurants, Robin. We have been here <laughs> since Friday getting set for this uh, parade today. And so we've had weight. <laughs> I weigh about 15 pounds more than I did when I got here. But the, uh, Robin and I had the opportunity to go into the Mexican pavilion and sample some of the cuisine the other night. And we ate at the base of a replica of a Mayan uh, pyramid. And a river was flowing right through where we were eating. It is absolutely spectacular. It is incredible. And it really gives you the feeling of being in Mexico. And there you see another shot of the crowd. Practically everybody here is decked out with American flags. I believe that might be a shot of some of the VIPs that were invited again. Going back to the presidential motorcade as he slowly winds his way down, trying to get a look at everybody that he can. And again, this is a repeat inauguration parade, or actually uh, the parade that never came off in Washington back in January, January the 21st, is being recreated here at Disney World. It was so cold back there in January in Washington that people were afraid that the band members and parade uh, members would uh, get frostbite and so forth, so the parade had to be canceled. But no danger of frostbite this Definitely afternoon. not. And you know, this idea was really the brainchild of the Disney marketing folks. I understand the idea to recreate this parade came out of a marketing brainstorming session and in fact happened in February. And you know, even though the president is only going to actually be on Epcot Center property for about an hour and a half, this thing has been planned for weeks and months. And Disney didn't even know until a couple of weeks ago that the president had in fact committed to come here. So they were doing it all on the maybe that he would show up and he indeed Right now, uh, once again, Mr. Reagan is on his way to China here at Epcot. It is here that the Disney folk have recreated the Beijing Temple of Heaven. It is the centerpiece of the China Pavilion and again, something really to behold. And he's getting awfully close to us now, Robert. He is, and it's getting real exciting here. The crowd waiting in anticipation to see him. And there you see a wide shot of China. Isn't that beautiful, folks? Doesn't it look like we're really there? Disney had, in fact, invited all 50 of the bands that were going to be in the original inaugural here today. We keep telling you that there are only 18 bands, but in fact, all 50 were invited. The problem was a scheduling problem. A lot of schools are out already, and a lot of schools, unfortunately, didn't have enough money to come here, even though Disney and several corporations and neighboring communities are picking up part of the tab. Oh, some of the corporations have done an absolute... There he is, Mickey Mouse. And look at him, decked out in his Uncle Sam suit. Wait till the president gets a load of that. We'll get a kick out of that. I know he will. But let's quickly mention some of the corporations that have gone out of their way to make this event happen. Days Ends of America has helped provide lodging for all of the kids in the bands. Eastern Airlines, Delta Airlines, and Greyhound Bus Lines have assisted with transportation needs. And Burger King Restaurants of Florida has offered to help feed all of the hungry band members. And uh, but. One of the local people, a couple of local communities have done a tremendous job in pulling this off, Robin. That's right. It's the Kissimmee St. Cloud community, which is the gateway to Disney World. It's right outside the gates. Those folks have contributed $150,000 to the half a million dollar price tag to this event. And he is certainly just, they are making it all possible. Absolutely. And now, twice in the same month, Mr. Reagan will visit Germany. This visit, though, being much faster and somewhat less controversial. <laughs> That's for sure. And Germany is recreated here through a small Bavarian village. And there you see he's coming up upon it. And I'll tell you, folks, this is a place where Oktoberfest happens every day. So uh, it's going to be fun. And that is a magical kingdom. And, that <laughs> and there are also shops in there that have some of the uh, German, world-famous German porcelain and the world-famous German cookies. I know we keep talking about food, but this is a place where you can, can sample the world's cuisine and just a few minutes. And in just a few moments, President Reagan will be passing in front of Robin and me, situated in front of the Italian showcase, and that's quite an extravagant building as well. It really is. In fact, one of the portions of the Italian pavilion is a recreation of a building at St. Mark's Square in Venice. Very elaborate building, and they've done it down to the fine detail. Here's the first of the presidential motorcade passing us. The president should be behind. 
and the president, president's Go ahead. <laughs> well, the president is in the car with the flashing red lights in case folks at home are having trouble figuring out which limousine he's in. <laughs> Sometimes that's tough. Everybody has their flags ready and in salute of the president. And I know when I saw any president for the first time, it is quite a moving experience. And I know these folks are going to treasure it forever. No question about it. You can hear the crowd noise picking up in the background here because the president's motorcade is now passing us and quite a bit of noise, a lot of flag waving, a lot of excited kids and just thousands of smiles. On thousands of cameras going off, of course. Lots of film to be used here today. Of course, President Reagan is being flanked by lots of Secret Service people and there he goes. President Reagan and Nancy. Flanked by Secret Service personnel, always a concern in an event like this where there is a tremendous amount of public exposure for the president. On their way now to the reviewing stand, uh, the president will, of course, leave the motorcade and exit into the viewing stand where he will make uh, some remarks. And as we indicated a moment ago, the chief executive officer of the Disney Corporation, Michael Eisner, will also make some opening remarks as well. A lot of festivities planned this afternoon, still a lot of excitement to come. Robin was talking about the F-16 fighter planes uh, doing a flyover a little bit later on in the program, and a fireworks display unparalleled in fireworks displays. There's nothing like this at all. Ah, here Here's he is. Here's a historic moment, Judd. The Mickey president and, and Minnie. And uh, Mrs. Reagan meet Mickey and Minnie Mouse. And you know, really and truly, this has to be a significant event. It is a lot more significant than you might think. This is Mickey and Minnie's very first visit to Epcot Center, even though Epcot has been open for almost three years now. Mickey and Minnie have never been here before, and that was partly because of the philosophy when Epcot first opened. The Disney folks wanted it to be a separate identity from Magic Kingdom, and so the fantasy characters were not brought over here. Well, it's good to see Mickey and Minnie out and about now. I understand Mickey is developing a very fast friendship with an extraordinary character here at Epcot Center. Uh, he's over in the Journey into Imagination Pavilion. His name is Figment, That's as right. in Figment of your imagination. You get it? Yeah, <laughs> I got it. He's very cute. The bands are now beginning to uh, take their position for the start of the review. The color guard going past us right now, and you're seeing it on your screen. Now the bands, each one of them, will be going up right in front of the reviewing stand and giving sort of a solo performance for the president. They're not all going to whisk by. Each one's going to have an audience with the president. There's, there's uh, Mickey escorting the first lady to the reviewing stand. What a <laughs> picture fun. opportunity. Huh? And there is Minnie and I'm getting a big hug from the president. <laughs> I bet you President Reagan has never had an opening or a meeting like this before. With all of the uh, problems that obviously surround the President of the United States, this has to be a great getaway. To come here, to relax and enjoy yourself, if only for an hour and a half. This is really the fun part of his Memorial Day. He's going to be whisking all around the stage. We'll tell everybody about that later on. But this is the fun and game, certainly for him today. That is a sight. Mickey Mouse in an Uncle Sam suit. I don't care how old you are, he's still adorable. The first, the first family of Disneyland, uh, Disney World, meeting the first family of the United States. Now that presidential reviewing area that we've been alluding to throughout the broadcast and... Oh, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey saluting the President of the United States. This whole area where you see the president standing has been sealed off um, early this morning so Secret Service could make their normal routine sweep of the place like they do any time the president is out in the public. And it was just recently opened up so the VIPs could go in there and line up for this event. Security, obviously, as you have indicated, is very, very tight. And I think they're now making their way. Is that Mickey pointing his way to uh, the reviewing stand? I there? think so. Come this way. <laughs> And Mickey and Minnie showing the president and Nancy how to walk up the steps to the reviewing stand. And Michael Eisner following along. I think uh, 
hard to see on these monitors, but I believe that uh, the Eisner family are waiting inside the uh, reviewing booth right now. that we referred to before. These two are the host bands. They were not originally scheduled to be in the inauguration in Washington, but they are here today to honor their communities, which we told you before did so much to make this event possible, kicking in $150,000 to help the other students get here. As a matter of fact, in a letter to Disney World, the president wrote that he was tremendously proud of these bands, and particularly these two Florida communities for contributing sizable amounts of money to pull all this off. You indicated $150,000. To me, that's a sizable yes, amount. Yes, it is. He says it's all a, a great example of his private sector initiative, and I believe he is. Here comes the uh, St. Cloud High School from St. Cloud, Florida, behind the color guard. And you know what's really interesting about these two bands is the fact that the kids in them did not know until a week ago that they were in fact going to be performing for the president. And you can imagine, they were absolutely flabbergasted by it. When the parade gets underway, these two bands will march as a combined unit, 150 strong. As the host bands, obviously, as you see right here, they will be leading the parade. And look coming here, Rod. Here comes one of the first units in the parade. You're about to see it. It is an antique steam calliope. You're going to see it in just a moment. <laughs> yes. That's something to look forward to. It right? is. And wait till a, you see it. It's unbelievable. The Percheron horses are magnificent animals, and they'll be pulling the calliope. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Right now, let's continue to look at the, uh, the two bands that are the host bands for the parade today. And if you've gotten a chance to get a peek at that presidential reviewing stand, you'll see that there's so much glass there that President Reagan really can see the entire band. It's not like he's in some stuffy theater. He can see everything, and they can see him. And I know each kid is going to memorize that moment. There you see. As a matter of fact, I was talking with some of the kids prior to the parade, and uh, I said, well, is it uh, really hard to march with all this heat and so forth? And they said, no, they're not concerned about the heat at all. The only thing they're concerned about when they pass that reviewing stand, that they are in step and playing That is their a concern, notes that's right. <laughs> One thing to note, some of these band members are wearing quite warm suits. Some of these are wool suits that they would have worn in the original inaugural. And we're about to hear the national anthem. And the thundering hooves you may hear in the background. Would you please rise and join over 2,500 of the nation's finest young musicians, along with the Walt Disney World Orchestra and the Voices of Liberty in the presentation of our national anthem.
that a sight to Ladies and gentlemen, here to welcome the President and Mrs. Reagan, the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Walt Disney Productions, Mr. Michael Eisner and his wife, Jane. I'd like to welcome everybody here to Walt Disney World. Uh, Chief of Staff, Donald Reagan, welcome you here. All the other dignitaries, including the young people that came here, a man that is the oldest American to climb the Mount Everest is here with us. Uh, we welcome uh, Mrs. Reagan as well. And I just want to say that I was in Washington 105 degrees ago. <laughs> It was minus 20 degrees at the inauguration. It's 85 here today. Uh, even though this isn't the official, it's the unofficial inauguration parade. It's the first time since 1789 it has not been in Washington. I just want to say that Walt Disney, were he alive today, would be proud to be standing here in my place with the President of the United States. And I welcome him with Mrs. Lillian Disney, his widow, to our great, wonderful company here. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Please all be seated. And I want to thank all of you, Senator Paula Hawkins, Congressman Ireland, Congressman Connie Mack, McCollum, the distinguished people here, and Mr. and Mrs. Eisner, all of you ladies and gentlemen, these wonderful young people. We have come here, our first stop this morning on this decoration day was at Arlington Cemetery. And I just wonder if because of the special character of this day, Memorial Day, if we couldn't perhaps bow our heads for a few seconds in silent prayer for those who have given their lives that we might live in liberty. Amen. Well, indeed, it is an honor for me to be here today to receive a magnificent gift that I received and a second and very much warmer inauguration day. I understand that in preparing for this event, more than 2,500 young people worked with sponsors in the private sector who donated food, transportation, and lodging. And each of you who helped to make this private sector initiative possible has my heartfelt thanks. Tomorrow evening, I will address the nation about a dramatic proposal to reform our tax system. It's a proposal intended to launch a new American revolution and to give to you, young people, as you come of age, a nation of ever greater freedom, and vitality, and strength. You know, today we're enjoying a standard of living that, when I was your age, could not even have been imagined. Buoyed by medical breakthroughs and rising standards of living, the life expectancy of Americans has been increasing steadily for 50 years. I've already surpassed my own life expectancy at my birth by 20 years. Now, there are a lot of people that find that a source of annoyance. <laughs> but I appreciate it very much. Today, we take for granted Take for granted so many inventions that inspired wonder not long ago. The polio vaccines of Dr. Jonas Salk and Dr. Albert Sabin. Television, first in black and white and now in vivid color. Drought-resistant seeds and cold-resistant grains. Computers in the workplace and the home. Spacecraft that can orbit the Earth for days and then land gently on a desert runway. Despite the predictions so many made during the Great Depression when I was a young man, Life in America today is not worse, it's far better. And let us ask then, what made it so? Was it government directing our daily lives? During these past five decades, the government has indeed it provided vital services and helped improve life for many people. No one doubts 
the necessity of a strong national defense to the role our military has played in keeping us free. Likewise, no one doubts the importance of the government's safety net for those in genuine need. Yet our national experience shows that when government grows beyond these two limited duties, when government lays claim to more and more of our resources and begins through massive regulation and high taxation to impinge on our individual freedoms, then our economy grows not more prosperous, but less so. Throughout the 1970s, for example, government's growth was unbridled, yet our economy stagnated. By 1980, the gross national product registered zero growth. If it was not the government that spurred our economic growth, was it perhaps our natural resources? Our vast land has always been blessed by a mighty multitude of resources, broad plains, powerful rivers, and rich deposits of minerals. Yet in a sense, the primary reality of a resource exists not in the earth, but in the minds of the men and women who give it usefulness and value. Consider oil. A century ago, oil was nothing but a thick, foul, and useless liquid. It was the invention of the internal combustion engine that gave oil its function. Or think of sand. Sand that used to be nothing but the stuff that deserts are made of. The development of the silicon microchip has given sand a vital function. And today we use it to make chips that give home computers their intelligence, monitor functions on aircraft, and guide our satellites through the dark reaches of space. No, it's not been so much our resources or our government that have given us our enduring vibrancy and growth, but the initiative and enterprise of individual Americans. Air travel, for example, has become commonplace because test pilots like Lindbergh had daring and engineers like Boeing and Douglas had the wits and determination. The government might have wished it could simply decree a polio vaccine, but it took years of unremitting effort and dedication by Dr. Salk and Sabin to make the vaccines a reality. In this setting, one story of a private initiative is particularly appropriate. Back in Missouri, in the early 1900s, there lived a farm boy who discovered that he had a knack for drawing barnyard animals. As an adult, he began to put his animals into cartoons, and he became convinced that he could entertain people by telling stories about a little creature with a high voice, red trousers and yellow shoes and white gloves. Professionals in the field made fun of the idea. And to produce his first cartoons, the young man had to sell or pawn virtually everything he owned. But today, 57 years later, this man and his creation have become permanently fixed in the history of our popular culture. His name was Walt Disney. His little creature was Mickey Mouse. The determination that each of these heroes of progress demonstrated came from within. Yet in each case, it was crucial to the success of their efforts that they were operating in a climate of economic liberty, in a free market where they could make use of pooled resources, experiment with new techniques and products, and submit their plans and hypotheses to the test of practical experience. This aspect of freedom, economic freedom, is one of the distinctive characteristics of life in our nation, as interwoven into the American legacy as freedom of speech and press. It has enabled our people to make our nation into a marvel of economic progress. And as with all the freedoms that we enjoy, it's our duty to cherish and protect it. Just as the American people rebelled against oppressive taxation some two centuries ago, the reform that I will announce tomorrow will represent a dramatic effort to make our tax code more simple, efficient, and fair, and place more resources into the hands of your families and ultimately you yourselves. It'll expand our economic freedom and clear the way for even greater economic vitality than that which we enjoy today. Nor will the benefits be economic alone. With more resources at their disposal, the American people will be able to provide greater support to the institutions that they themselves value. Our schools, universities, the arts, our churches and synagogues. As our economy grows, they too will flourish. John Marshall said 
The power to tax involves the power to destroy. If so, then the power to cut taxes must surely be the power to create. The power to force government to stand back and let the people themselves give expression to the spirit of enterprise, building and imagining, giving to you, our sons and daughters, a nation of ever greater prosperity and freedom. My friends, thank you again for the gift of this magnificent inaugural parade. May you enjoy all the blessings of a free and bountiful nation. And on this, the eve of the second American Revolution, may you always remember the enduring truth that our tax plan seeks to embody and that Americans have cherished through the ages. God made man for liberty. Thank you all. God bless you. And now, let the parade begin. Ladies and gentlemen, Walt Disney World is proud to present from across the nation the finest bands in the land in the President's Inaugural Bands Parade. And there you see the very beginning of the procession. And coming and what up... what you're hearing is the Calliope. That's right, the Calliope we alluded to earlier is about to come on your TV screen. And there it is. This is an antique steam Calliope. And like these student bands here, it was also supposed to be in the Washington Inaugural. And this has a lot of sentimental value for Disney World because this Calliope was bought by Walt Disney to open Disneyland in California. And uh, we were talking about the horses pulling the Calliope earlier. This eight-horse team pulling the Calliope was voted absolutely the best in the world, winning the world championship in 1983 at the famous Calgary Stampede. And those horses have an interesting story behind them. Disney World bought them from an Indiana horseman who was about to retire, but he missed his horses so much he decided, well, he was going to move to Florida and become a Disney World worker, and he is driving that Calliope today. And look at them. You can understand why he would miss them there. Oh, I sure can. Each of these horses is about six feet high. They're big Bergeron horses, and that's 18 hands in the old Indian parlance. And has an average weight of 2,100 pounds. And they're, some of them are fairly old, too, for horses. Now, they range in age from three years all the way up to 15 years old. Lots of horsepower pulling that Calliope today. I guess the total weight of them all would be about 17,000 pounds. And look at them. They are beautiful animals. So the President Inaugural Bands Parade has officially begun. 18 college and high school bands from throughout the country appearing. These kids are excited and happy that their hard work uh, preparing for this inauguration parade is at last play paying off. And there you see the very first band. There's President Reagan watching. The band he is looking at now is the Hardaway High School Marching Band from Columbus, Georgia. They, there they are. They are a military-type band all the way down to their core uniform, and they specialize in stirring marches. Let's hear it. Don't have to worry, Robin. I was looking. They're all marching in step. And another Georgia band is represented in the parade, Robin. This is Central High School Golden Lion Marching Band from Carrollton, Georgia. Only four years ago, there were fewer than 35 students enrolled in this band at Central High, but uh, Mr. Steve Calhoun, band director, thought the size of the unit should be larger, and that's exactly what he did. He took it out, and he tripled it. The band now has, or roughly tripled it anyway, the band has 93 members now, and that's a long way in only four years of operation. I think Mr. Steve Calhoun as the band director and uh, the band students, they are to be commended. Young band, very impressive. Our congratulations for a great job. Quite a tribute, the size that they've grown to. Let's hear them for a second.
President Reagan saluting the band members. And there goes the color guard. This is something that really stop, uh, touches some nostalgia chords for President Reagan. He loves this kind of thing. And really everyone else does too. Just look at the faces on the crowd here. That's the American tradition. Everybody loves a parade, and especially on Memorial Day. What a parade. of the country. This is the New Bedford High School Whaler Marching Band from wow. New Bedford, New Bedford rather, Massachusetts. And they have a little different sound than the rest of them. They are characterized by a jazz sound and very colorful visual presentation as you see right there. And you know this band has never lost a high school band competition. I wonder if the New Bedford football team would say the same thing. That'd be a great combination if they could. And in fact this band has won in the past years one has been named one of the top five bands in the country and they've also been chosen to represent North America in a music festival in Vienna, Austria. They are quite a band. They're playing the spirit of Massachusetts and with all the tremendous building projects going on in their state right now, anyone who's seen Boston lately knows there is definitely a new spirit pervading all of Massachusetts. And these kids are really good ambassadors for that new spirit. Spirit of Massachusetts with the New Bedford High School Whaler Marching Band. Another interesting point about this band, the band director had a heart attack last month and the band, the kids took over without him. They continued to practice and today is his very first day back. He's got to be very proud. Well, he's got to be happy he's alive to see this, first of all, and he's got to be proud of these kids. But it's good to have him back. The Whaler Marching Band passing in review in front of Preston and Mrs. Ray. This certainly isn't the reviewing stand at Pennsylvania Avenue, but I bet President Reagan likes it just as much. <laughs> Besides uh, community performances, the Avenger Band has played at many festivals and special events. As a matter of fact, in the spring of 1981 and 1984, it was selected to perform as the festival band in the Electric Light Parade. Nowhere else but right here in Disney World. Familiar turf for the East Greenwich High School Avenger Band. You know, so many people pronounce their hometown Greenwich. Now that really strikes a sour note in the hearts of all these kids. It's Greenwich. So we I, did it right. Yeah, we better get it right or we <laughs> might be wearing one of those tubas home for a hat. <gasps> oh boy, that'd be a new fashion. Now this band, Judd, gives all new meaning to the term award-winning. And there you see him. And let me tell you, this band has won 46 first place awards in competitions in the Bluegrass State in the past two years. Here they come now. This the is Grayson the Grayson County, County High School Cougar Bands from Litchfield, Kentucky. An award-winning band in every sense of the word. And Judd, this isn't the first time that they've played for President Reagan. They're a little jaded now. They've already performed for him <laughs> one time before, back in 1980. And they also performed for Vice President George Bush at uh, that massive rally held for him in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you might remember, back in 1984. But you know, as a personal note, strangely enough, 
I was in Litchfield, Kentucky just a few weeks ago on business, and had I known that I was going to be down here today and that the Grayson County Band was going to be here, I'd have dropped by the band hall and said hello. I'm sure they would have been glad to meet you and thrilled to tell you all about how excited they are about being here. The Grayson County High School Cougar Marching Band of Litchfield, Kentucky. The members of the band are wearing a four-style uniform blue, orange, and white. The flag and rifle details and the majorettes are wearing jumpsuits and, of course, the school color. A little bit of the crowd waving at the camera. Gentleman showing how much he likes President Reagan with the President Reagan picture on his hat. And some of the applause, people showing how well they like this parade this afternoon. Now, Robin, the next band is from my neck of the woods. The Marching Blue Devils of Brunswick High School. That's Brunswick, Ohio. Ohio. Uh, as a TV anchorman in Cleveland, I was there that day that uh, this band performed for Mr. Reagan's campaign visit to Cleveland back in November of 1984. The Blue Devils did a good job then, and they're doing a terrific job right now. They certainly are, and this is a 61-year-old band, probably one of the older bands with a much longer tradition behind it than some of the others. And you know, that tradition was almost cut short a couple of years ago. I happen to know a personal thing about this, Robin. The Marching Blue Devils of Brunswick High School in Ohio faced elimination due to severe financial problems within the school district. That was uh, just a couple of years ago. And during a crucial tax levy, this 202-member band took to the streets campaigning for the passage of that money issue. And really and truly, due to the determination of these, these young people, the local media took up their cry for help, and the voters of Brunswick then approved the levy by nearly a 60% margin, and that levy had been defeated five times before. So What a success story. This band can really be proud of that and their performance here today. And I understand that the community, again, of course, to help them get here, raised something like $40,000 to bring them here this time around, a second inaugural parade. Some of the stations on our network uh, this afternoon, we will be going past the 1.30 deadline due to the length of the parade and all of the excitement here this afternoon. That's right. Now, the next band you're about to see, and there it is, is the Como High School Band from Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, this band has never played for President Reagan before, and they are so excited to be here that they have dubbed themselves Reagan's Cajuns. Now, this band, Judd, has won a lot of local and national awards, but despite all that, they consider being here today the band's greatest achievement today. And they're proud of their Cajun heritage. You can bet on that. Uh, that, of course, being in Louisiana. And one of their songs that they're playing is the Cajun March. The children in this band range in age from 14 to 18 years old. And they, again, like all the other bands, have been practicing for this moment for a long time. And it's a growing high school there in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana as well. Como High School opened in 1966 as a comprehensive course, four-year high school, with only 400 students at that time. It has now grown to a total of 1,500 students in 1985, comprising the grades 9 through 12. There they go, the Como High School Band. And now, deep from the heart of southern Mississippi, coming up in just a moment, I think you hear their music right now. Here they come, the Pascagoula High School Band. I'm really personally proud to see Mississippi represented in this inaugural band's parade, Robin. My wife is from Mississippi, that's why. And we have a home just outside Tupelo, which is up in northeastern Mississippi. Pascagoula's down in the southern part of the state, of course. I haven't been there before. It's one of the best marching bands in Mississippi. Look at the smile on the president's face. He's thrilled. He must be thrilled to finally see these bands. And you know, this is one of the largest and best marching bands in Mississippi, hailing from the state's largest seaport, which has done a lot to help the Navy. That's right. Pascagoula is also the home of Congressman Trent Lodge, minority whip of the House of Representatives and a former saxophone player. 
in this band. So this band has quite a heritage behind it. it sent some people to uh, the Capitol Hill. And they're about to salute President Reagan, I think, with the Battle of the Republic. Trojan Band from Tampaco, Illinois, and this is the town in which President Reagan was born. It's accompanied by the Dixon Pom Pom Squad, and Dixon, Illinois, is the town in which President Reagan grew up. So you can imagine there's a tremendous amount of sentimental value in President Reagan viewing this band today. I'm sure there are more than a few nostalgic chords being struck in the President's heart as he watches both these bands march past. We were talking to some of the band members earlier this morning, and uh, one of them at least claims that he's distantly related to President Reagan on his mom's side. He's not quite sure what that relation is. Now, there, we've got some fifth and sixth cousin, uh, cousin stories circulating throughout the Epcot Center this afternoon. Again, we've told you that Disney and several corporate sponsors have kicked in to help pay for the children to come here today. but. Some of the bands did have to make up some of the pocket change that they needed, and the Tampaco band is one case in point where they had pizza sales and bake sales to raise some of the money that they needed to supplement what Disney helped pay for. So often, these names are so hard to pronounce. I think it's Tampico. I'm not is for it? sure. Okay. I, well. I've not been there, but I believe that. You, you read it in the paper, you want to pronounce it like Tampico, like in Mexico. But I think it's Tampico. I'm not for sure. Well... President Reagan could probably tell us, that's for sure. That's what we need to do is go in there. It's air conditioned in there. Maybe he would let us in and uh, we could ask you about that. The next band coming up. I don't. The president applauding. The band's from, uh, and the Pom Pom Squad from his birthplace and the town where he grew up. You know, President Eisenhower both marched in and reviewed an inaugural parade. No other president has ever done that. He marched in Wilson's parade in 1913 as a very, very young man. And then, of course, he reviewed his own parade as president in 1953. And there we just sure saw a shot of the VIP stand, everybody wearing straw hats to try to shield the sun. This is a typical South Florida hot, humid summer day. So and maybe, there's quite a breeze coming in. That's though. That true. feels good. But weather could turn out to be another story today. Some of those kids I know have got to be feeling the heat. Oh, those wool uniforms are sometimes really tough. And now I think the next band is set and in place and ready to go. This next band has kind of an unusual name for a high school band. There you can read it. The 20th Maine Regiment Drum and Bugle Corps. Whew, that's a mouthful. From Waterville, Oakland, Maine. The Corps selected its name, give you a little historical significance here. They selected its name after some historical research. It was learned that the 20th, led by Joshua Chamberlain, played a big part in winning the Civil War for the North. The Corps members are very, very proud of their name, as you, you might imagine. And they, appropriately enough, are going to do a theme song, or in fact, their theme song is the Battle Hymn of the Republic. The Corps director is John Mikowski from, and I think this is another one of those local, regional names. You want to say Nashua, New Hampshire, but that's probably not going to be correct. Well, I think the folks in New Hampshire will forgive us if we uh, make a few minor slips.
know, this band is a little bit more unusual than most of the bands represented here today. The 20th Maine Regiment Drum and, Drum and Bugle Corps, which is based in Waterville, Oakland, Maine, is comprised of youngsters 12, 18 years of age, but they all, all don't go to the same school. They total 72 members, but the four membership reflects students from throughout the state and is open to all Maine students who have a knowledge or close interest in music. It's quite a group. Judd, another interesting and unusual band coming up. This is the Holland High School Marching Dutchman Band from none other than Holland, Michigan. Now, what makes this band so unusual, and there you hear it, they are wearing wooden shoes, so they have a different sort of sound than your normal band. When I was in high school, the band director always accused me of wearing wooden shoes. <laughs> Looking at these youngsters marching, I can finally take that as a compliment. <laughs> Isn't that great? You know, Holland, Michigan is also the tulip capital of the United States, and their tulip festival held every spring is always a lot of fun to see. I bet it is. Colorful. That's charming. The Marching Dutchman Band, clamping down the street. Listen to that sound. It's great. And another Florida band Floridians can be proud of, the Riverview High School Kilty Band from Sarasota. The Riverview High School Band has been privileged to perform at a variety of functions during the past 27 years, including a European tour of Scotland, England, France, and Germany. And they're doing the same thing essentially here today in the World Showcase at That's Epcot right. Center. The band is accompanied by bagpipes, dancers, and of course the color guard. This is one of the largest bands, incidentally, Robin, performing today with over 250 members. So they'll be uh, marching for a while, I think. There, of course, uh, is the president and Mrs. Reagan talking things over with the Eisners. Both couples enjoy today's president and our little band's parade. And Michael Eisner is, of course, the chief executive of Walt Disney World. And Disney World is the organization that came up with this idea to recreate the inaugural parade and give all those kids who were frozen out in January a chance to do it all over again and really relive or start to live a once-in-a-lifetime dream. Michael Eisner referred to it a moment ago. It was 20 degrees below zero back on January 21st. It's no wonder they had to cancel that parade. And here we are in 85 degrees sunshine. It's a great afternoon for a parade. Welcome to Florida sunshine. And for those of you who might keep track of this sort of thing, the band consists of 200 musicians, 22 color guards, two banner carriers, 10 bagpipes, and 24 dancers.
Scottish. And it is Scottish. This is the second group to be decked out in Scottish garb. And there you see the University of Iowa Scottish Highlanders. There they are. This is one of the few university-based bagpipe groups in the country and one of the few university groups in this procession. And as you can see, they are decked out again in elaborate Scottish uniforms. These uniforms are modeled after the Black Watch of Scotland. They're in their kilts and their elaborate hose and their feathered bonnets. And there are 36 pipers and drummers in this group. Looking at the next band, they really take music seriously at Uniontown High School in Uniontown, Kansas. The Uniontown High School Marching Eagles are marching today, get this, with one half of the school's total population. That's the school's incredible. total enrollment is 150, and if my arithmetic serves me correctly, that means that this band is about 75 members strong. And the principal of the school says, although we are small in school size and numbers, we are very happy that we are not required to think, dream, or act small in this great country of ours. I'll bet that man standing right there in that reviewing stand would agree with every word he said. Definitely. They, they really are an example of President Reagan's American dream and private, sec private sector initiative that you have to do what you have to do to get yourself going. And there they are. This is the Uniontown High School Marching Eagles from Uniontown, Kansas, and that is in Southeast Kansas. They're small, but I'll bet they're making their school proud. And now we see a band which hails from the teeny hamlet of Weeping Waters, Nebraska. This is the Weeping Waters High School Band, and the population of this town is 1,200, so you bet that Half the town is in the band, and everybody <laughs> back in Weeping Waters, I'm sure, very proud today. A little more than 30 members in this band, and that's not much smaller than the high school band I was in in Mount Vernon, Texas. We weren't known for limestone as Weeping Water is. It's a real strong limestone is there in Weeping Water. But we were known for football. Don Meredith was from Mount Vernon. Oh. And this, this band today representing Small Town USA and the breadbasket of the nation. Weeping Water, Nebraska. The Big Red Cornhusker State. God bless America. This band performed in 1981 for Vice President Bush in Lincoln. That's Nebraska, of course. New Mexico is? No, I'm afraid I don't. That's where the Bloomfield High School Bobcat Band is from. Bloomfield, New Mexico is located in kind of a unique geographical area known as Four Corners. And that's where the borders of New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and Utah meet. This band is the only one in the parade today that has performed at both Disney facilities in the United States, at Disneyland in California, of course, and now right here at Disney World in Florida at the President's inaugural band parade, Bloomfield High School, Bloomfield, New Mexico. And this band has a very diverse cultural heritage. The members in it made up of Indian, Spanish, and Anglo-American students. Very appropriate for this intercultural setting that we are at at World Showcase. Ten nations represented here, all of them living in harmony. Each one of these bands has done various functions to raise money in order to come here today. And uh, this particular band picked up trash along the highways to earn funds for this inaugural trip. A little bit for the environment, a little bit to come to. This is the final band in our
procession, otherwise known as the pride of Capitol Hill. This is the Eastern High School Blue and White Marching Machine. From none other than Washington, D.C., they have sojourned all the way here to Florida to serenade their neighbor, President Reagan. The music is called the USA Salute, and it's an entire arrangement of patriotic songs. Listen and see if you can pick out the names of the songs. the original inauguration parade in Washington back in Wash in January. And now, here come the F-16 fighters signaling the beginning of the finale. They were about to fly over, and here they come. You can see them on your screen now. of the individual. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. I have a dream this afternoon that the brotherhood of man will become a reality in this day, with this faith. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Four forward, four forward, drifting to the right a little. Contact light, okay, engine stop. We copy it down, Eagle. Tranquility base here, the Eagle has landed. America has always been greatest when we dare to be great. We can reach for greatness again. We are first, we are the best, and we are so because we're free. On this Memorial Day, we remember and pay tribute to those who served our country in every branch of the armed forces men and women of courage and pride who fought valiantly to protect our cherished freedom. And so, to honor those who made the supreme sacrifice in defense of this nation, we direct your attention to the skies above the World Showcase Lagoon and ask that you now please join us in a moment of silence.
That Thank you for joining us on this very special occasion. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at Epcot Center. And after... And there you see the Reagans waving and saying goodbye. President Reagan about to board his helicopter for the airport for yet another World <laughs> Memorial Day stop. Next stop, Miami, I think, and he's going to appear at a fundraiser for a GOP person that I think you're very familiar with being from Miami. That's right, it is Senator Paula Hawkins. It's going to be held in downtown Miami in the Omni Hotel. And President Reagan will be there by about 3 o'clock this afternoon. He's only going to spend an hour or so there, and then he's going to whisk on back to Washington. The president now and Mrs. Reagan getting into the car for their brief trip back behind the American Adventure Pavilion to get in the helicopter and fly over to Page Airport here in Orlando, Florida for Air Force One and for the trip down to Miami. What, about 45 minutes? Yeah, actually in Air Force One it might be a little quicker because it's 45 <laughs> minutes in the commercial airlines and I know everybody in Miami is looking forward to his visit. Of course, the president started his day today in a more somber note, laying a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery. Again, this has got to be certainly the highlight of his day. This is one of the, well, I can safely say this is the greatest Memorial Day parade that I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them, of course, both of us being in news in separate parts of the country. Uh, we've had opportunities over the years to see a lot of these parades, but I can say that this is, this is totally unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. Disney World wanted this so much to be more than a parade. Again, like we said in the beginning, they wanted it to be a star-spangled tribute, and it certainly was. I'll tell you, when those F-16s went over and the chorus was singing and the balloons were going, I saw a lot of people wiping tears from their eyes. It was oh. very moving. I know chills were going down my spine. I think all of the 50,000-plus people who have lined the parade route and have stayed out here since, many of them since early this morning, they have enjoyed it very, very much. There's the crowd waving as the President's motorcade goes by just behind Robin and me here at the stand. One last wave, and there's a little girl conducting her own <laughs> orchestra with American flag, certainly getting into the Memorial Day spirit. But uh, that just about wraps up today's Memorial Day program here at Epcot at Disney World, the President's inaugural band's parade. And again, Disney World, who has made so many dreams come true for so many kids, making yet another dream come true for all these band members. It's been a lot of fun, and we hope that you have a very safe and happy holiday for what's left of it. And I'm we know, Judd Hambrick. And I'm Robin Carter, and I was going to say, we know this is a Memorial Day parade. Everybody out there is certainly going to remember. Goodbye, everybody. Have a safe holiday.